Cataract surgery involves removing a cloudy lens inside the eye. Matter of fact, it's the cloudy lens inside the eye and replacing it with one that is crystal clear and artificial made of acrylic so that it will not age over the rest of your life. Now, that leaves us with a, with a very serious responsibility and that is to get the maximum vision possible with whatever that new intraocular lens will be. And so that involves two biggies. One is reading and the other is not. It is distance. So the, the reason that this matters is because for our entire youth from age, well, zero until somewhere between 42 and 50 for most people, the lens that's inside the eye, which I, I'll draw quickly over here. If we draw an eye from the side, this is the front dome of the cornea here. This would be like a little uh, iris here. Uh, and then we have this lens inside the eye. So this lens, if we were looking at something up close, it would be very rounded like this. And if we were looking at something far, it'd get very flat like this because there's these little trampoline springs all the way around it called zonules and they're attached to this muscle called a ciliary muscle. And all of this without thinking, your autonomic nervous system and the rest of your nervous system that works purely by reflexes would uh, take this ring of muscle and, and flex it and focus things so that you could either see something up close or far away and it would snap into focus for distance or near without you having to think about it. That autofocus slowly gets lost. And so uh, when we're talking about replacing your lens, the question of how to fix reading and distance vision, what I want to be really clear on is one option that we do not have. And in all likelihood, it's probably going to be 15 to 25 years before it even uh, looks like it's possible because we can see stuff coming down the pike with FDA trials. So you can get this view of kind of the next decade. Nothing on the horizon. I compare it a, a little bit to uh, getting computers that are implanted in people's brains. Like we can figure probably over enough time uh, that stuff's going to get figured out. Whether that's good or bad is a different story, but uh, we, we're not there yet. We just know it probably will happen if technology progresses over a long enough period of time. That's kind of where we are with coming up with a lens that's able to do what the natural human lens did inside the body. Very hard to beat what was already there. So we've got a couple of options. One, and I mean literally a couple. Option one is multifocal. And option two, is blended. So let's cover those one by one. Multifocal. Looks a little bit like this. So this is an intraocular lens and uh, these little arms are what hold it in place. Uh, and so this lens, as you can see, uh, cartoonishly drawn, has these rings to it. And the reason it needs those rings is because lacking autofocus, uh, your lens, the new artificial lens that goes in there, it's going to have a clearest point of focus at exactly one place. And that can be distance, which is great. Distance will look fantastic, but the near won't look good. It'll be too blurry. Or it can be near. You can say, I see perfectly close up close, but or perfectly clear up close, but I can't see in the distance because it has to have a focus point somewhere. And so since we can't have it auto-focusing, it's monofocal, it'll only see in one place. A way to fix that is multifocal, which is we've got these rings and that's near and far all the way out. And so uh, it's, it's basically the, as it gets bigger, uh, you go near, far, near, far as it, as it gets further out. And the math is more complicated on it, but that's truly the general idea. The advantage to that is that both eyes are seeing distance and both eyes are seeing near. The disadvantage, uh, there's two and they have to do with each other. The first one is that you're always looking through both. And so if you're looking at something down the road, you're also looking through the rings that are the near focusing rings. Uh, and so that light is not as focused. And if you're looking at something up close, you're looking through the close rings, the near ones, but you're also looking through the distance part of the multifocal all the time. And, and so it overall decreases the amount of contrast. And that leads to the second uh, possible disadvantage with a multifocal, 
Uh, and I'm not against multifocals. I put them in, uh, used to put them in a lot more, uh, and I still do in, in people where it's going to be a really good idea, a good candidate. But the second uh, reason that, it's a, that it can have a disadvantage is because you're paying for the distance and the near vision with the contrast sensitivity, like the currency you're paying in is your contrast sensitivity, how sharp and clear and unsmudged does it look. If you have any other reason to have a decreased contrast, uh, any other reason to have increased smudginess to the vision, it becomes very apparent. So in an eye that otherwise is perfectly healthy and has brilliant, wonderful contrast sensitivity, they can afford to give up some contrast and not even notice. It just looks good for the distance and good for near. But if there are any reasons, whether ones that you could detect before surgery or not, uh, then you will notice the decrease in contrast. And it's exceptionally frustrating for people to have 20-20 distance vision and 20-20 near and feel like none of it's very, very good. It leaves you in a feeling uh, that you're a little bit cornered because you don't really have an option to fix that other than doing what's called an intraocular lens replacement. Uh, and those are rare and you try to avoid it. So that is uh, multifocal. Blended is different than that. So the idea behind blended vision is, rather than trying to have both eyes see the exact same distance and both eyes see the exact same near, you're going to intentionally create a difference between those two eyes. What blended vision is not, and I wanna be emphatically clear on this, it is not mono vision. Mono vision, it's got the word, or prefix, I guess, mono in it for a reason, because each eye is kind of mono. It's, it's doing its own thing. One eye does only the distance, and is terrible at the near. The other eye does only the near, is terrible at the distance. And so each eye kind of fends for itself. Well, the human visual cortex, somewhere between 30 and 50% of the time, just it cannot do it. It can't ignore that because the brain was built to use both eyes at the same time. The same way it was built to use both ears at the same time. It's not necessarily that you're always registering, this is my right ear, this is my left ear. It's that you're spatially aware of what's around you because you've got stereo sound thanks to your two ears and the different signals coming into each of them. That's the same way it works with our eyes. We want to use both eyes at the same time. That's how our brain was built. And so with blended vision, you're taking advantage of that by having there be enough of a difference between the eyes that you have distance and near vision, but a small enough difference between the two eyes that you're using both of them at the same time. You're getting this depth of focus from distance to near because you're using the different signal coming into both eyes, just the same way that you use the different signal to get stereo sound. So with blended vision, the, the advantage to it is uh, it's, it's very customizable. Uh, you can tweak for a little bit more near or a little bit more distance uh, and all of that stuff uh, is, is helpful because it's nice to be able to have options. Um, so either one of these can be a really, really good option in order to get distance vision and near vision both. And it's best to get a bunch of diagnostic testing uh, to figure out what might be the best option for you and to talk through that with somebody that really loves this stuff and knows the details on it. Because uh, if you play your cards right, and I think you can, then you can get distance and near vision. Uh, and once you have it, it's permanent for the rest of your life.